Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here. I want to talk about the concept of meal replacement and figure out how to really end your weight loss ordeal for 2017. You know, there's so many pitfalls with weight loss and there's some odd paradoxes. You know, one of which is that there's a lot of different contradictory approaches that seem to work in the short term. You know, some go vegan and lose weight, some cut sugar and lose weight, some go low carb and that will work for them for a while. But the hard thing is that when you look long term, there's not, not many things that seem to be consistently effective. And I want to talk about why that is and what our best data tells us about solutions. So to introduce this, I want to give a little background and talk about a concept called decision fatigue. So it's a funny thing, but you can get how muscles can become fatigued. You know, you could lift your arm a certain number of times, like maybe you've got some weight on there, and at some point, something easy would become hard. You know, I could lift this plant, but if I did it a thousand times, it would feel very heavy. So it would be a fatigue. And when you're fatigued, your capacity is diminished. And we've learned that decisions work in the exact same way. So you can have someone decide on 50 things that are not consequential. And after doing that, they have less capacity to make important decisions. So this is a relevant concept in terms of food and dieting. And one of the pitfalls about a radical change in diet or lifestyle is this phenomena of decision fatigue. So you're used to doing things in a certain way and better or worse, it's automated. You know, you don't really think about it that much. We've all got our favorite go-to staple foods. But when you radically switch that, there's a lot of just conscious thought that has to go on. You know, we have types of thought that are very automated and work behind the scenes and other types that are very slow and deliberate. And this slow and deliberate thinking, the more we have to engage it, the less we can use it. <laughs> so this concept of meal replacement is one in which you've got automated meals. So you know what you're doing for a certain number of the meals per day. And that's really the main definition of it, is that rather than a meal or something you're going to plan and work out and put together, you've got some placeholder for that. And this has been used as a strategy for quite some time. Some of the earliest papers on this came back from the 60s, but there's references that are further back about it being used for quite, quite some time historically. There have been popular examples of this. One of the more public ones was the slim fast idea, for example. You know, they would do Two, two of the slim fast and a sensible meal for dinner was the advertisement. And this is something that has a good amount of documentation. Now we'll talk a lot about ingredients to think about and healthy ways to do it and ways to be effective. But the big picture is that there's strong science supporting the idea of meal replacement. And we think this decision fatigue may be a big part of it. But the evidence has shown that the idea of meal replacement, so not so much saying I will cut out this food or that food, or I will eat this much food, or I will log X number of calories, but more so that there's a, something that's already pre-made or maybe a set recipe that will be a certain number of meals, and that's, that's automated. And oftentimes, some meals can still be more ad hoc within parameters, or things you still can weave together, but there's fewer of them. So there's fewer decisions to have to make about food throughout the day. So studies have shown that versus just controlling your food choices or food quantities, meal replacement can have greater effects as far as initial weight loss, as far as lasting weight loss, as far as improving the various markers of diabetes, uh, as far as visceral fat loss, as far as free radical damage goes, and as far as managing hunger as well. And this, this can seem counterintuitive for some people, but it's, it's very true. And some of the more prestigious conservative medical review groups like the Cochrane Review Board have shown that this has some of the best level of evidence for effectiveness for weight loss and weight retention, keeping weight off for longer periods of time. So, you know, some of the benefits, we talked about the decision fatigue concept, the ease, the time frame is very big, the cost, the convenience, the compliance. So to think about all these things, uh, cost factors are, are, are big. You know, many pre-made meal replacement items even if they're a few dollars a serving or three dollars a serving or so, they end up being much less cost than a meal. And convenience, uh, big. You know, I, I love food. I'm a fan of food. <laughs> but 
Have you ever fasted for a period of time? You know, like several days? I've done so more in the past, I guess, but one of the most remarkable things I'd always notice is that when you're fasting, it seems like your day is like 36 hours long. And not just because you're, you're hungry and time goes slowly, but because there's so many ways you spend time in food-related activities that are now off the table, no pun intended. <laughs> but seriously, if you're, if you're not shopping, you're prepping food, you're managing the refrigerator, you're washing dishes, you're putting away food, it's, you know, there's always some food-related activity. And meal replacement chops this part of it down as well. You're spending less time on food-related things. And that also is relevant for the convenience. Uh, I've had some talk about planning on meal replacement or wanting to do it and say, hey, but I've got a trip coming up. This may not be a good time. It's actually a perfect time. It's so easy when you're traveling to have some meal replacement strategy and have shakes ready to go and not worry about where you're going to get a meal in the airport or how you're going to figure out something healthy on the go just to have that preset. So super easy for convenience. And then compliance, just how well people can stick with it. Data has shown that's much larger for meal replacement over just routine diets as well. So what are some pitfalls of the meal replacement? Well, like so many things that we do in a big way in America, we want to do low cost processed versions of that. And that's what many popular products have been. So you don't want to do sugar for meal replacement. You know, there's always, there's always a couple of goals you want to overlap. One is your short-term goal of weight loss and improving symptoms, totally valid. The other one is the long-term arc of your health. And I don't know if your long-term arc of health is going to improve if you're consuming tons of sugar or preservatives. You know, many things that are thought of as meal replacement are also getting their calories from corn syrup or corn oil, you know, and not the place you want your calories from. The other big pitfall is just preservatives, you know, lots of random chemicals, things you would not find on your pantry in the kitchen. <laughs> then we think about your flora, you know, the data on the gut flora being the big driver in terms of your immune system, your health, your metabolism, your brain function, that data is getting stronger and stronger. And if you're lacking the good types of fiber and good diversity of fiber, your flora starves and probiotics cannot compensate for that. That does not work the same way that fiber does. So that, that's a big issue. We also think about allergens. You know, many of us have intolerances to common low quality food sources. Things like dairy, gluten, eggs can also be issues, soy, and you want to really steer clear of those. And then just synthetic vitamins. You know, we think about compounds like folic acid or other nutrients that require more processing by your body. So good things to watch and, and stick, stick away from. Those that have thyroid disease, also you want to avoid added versions of iodine to the diet. And there are many commercial meal replacements that have that. So meal replacement done well. Well, so one consideration would be about the macros, you know, the macronutrients, the proteins, the fats, the carbs. Probably the biggest consideration here is gonna be high quality and high quantity protein as a function of percentage calories. So I've talked in other videos about how on a lower protein diet, you lose muscle mass, even if you're gaining weight. And if you're losing weight, then you lose a ton of muscle mass. So anytime we're considering modifying food intake, we've really got to make sure we're getting good quality protein and it's at least a quarter of our calories. So that's, that's critical. The fats and the carbs, it's good to have some of each, they're not things you need in big quantities. They're not the main needle movers. I am a fan of fiber and some good slow burning carbs and some, some essential quality fats. But the main thing is really getting that protein, making sure it's at least a quarter, if not a third of the calorie sources for meal replacement. And then you want clean calories. So just not, not things that are processed and flour based and synthetic. Any micronutrients, you want those to be naturally derived. Uh, and also consider just GMO, gluten free. And if you do it well, you can still do a really easy job doing meal replacement while sticking within guidelines for those who are paleo or vegan. You know, not, not really hard to work around. Here's a proposed format that I've used for, boy, thousands of people clinically and many in various programs that we see do an awesome job for rapid, rapid weight loss. And the exciting thing we now know is that you know, we'd always want to have rapid weight loss because someone wants to lose weight. You, you don't want it to go slowly. You'd rather get there quicker, you know, like any goal. And many even thought that, almost in a puritanical sense, it seems intuitive that if it's too fast, it can't last. You know, like it's too good to be true. But data has shown that if it's done right, 
uh, fast lasts. You know, fast late weight loss is lasting weight loss and more effective. So the format I encourage people is thinking about this in phases. So there's one phase that's going to be the first four weeks, and during this you want some really direct, quick fat loss, and that's primarily going to be visceral fat loss. And to be really precise, a lot of that's in the liver and the pancreas that you lose fat from, which is awesome. The best format for that is going to be doing two meal replacements per day, so breakfast and lunch, and then one dinner. Now snacks, you can do none, or you can do a few, a few uh, dip-type vegetables, but not dip. <laughs> so think about like a few cups of broccoli, cauliflower, uh, baby carrots, uh, sweet, sweet cherry tomatoes, uh, snow peas, even mushrooms or cucumber slices, um, jicama, a few cups of those optional snacks. So the meal replacement, going to come in around 200, 250 calories, and again, quarter to a third of that protein. Uh, the daily reset shake I've used for that in clinical trials and for many people, two, two scoops of that in water, very simple recipe for meal replacement. That's a great, a great mix for it, and plus you've got the resistant starch. So the meal, the evening meal, Think about roughly four ounces of clean protein, uh, poultry, uh, fish, best, best go-tos, best staples, unlimited quantities of, of low carbohydrate vegetables. So all the veggies besides corn, squash, sweet potatoes, you know, those particular ones, potatoes that are higher, higher in carbs, and then some good carbs. So you want roughly three quarters of a cup of good healthy carbs. Now that could be those starchy veggies. Potatoes are actually awesome to be used in this context. That could also be some legumes or some intact whole grain buckwheat, you know, things along those lines. So you want the lean protein, tons of veggies, and some good carbs. And that covers the basis for that evening meal. So two meal replacement, one meal, optional snacks, four weeks. That's that first phase. And that's typically that first 5% of body weight. That's not uncommon. That can be a big, big shift. The next phase is more so getting the rest of the way to one's target weight. So that could be 10% to 20% of total body weight loss. That's often three to six months for most, most that have 10, 20, 30, maybe even 40 pounds they want to lose. So three to six months for that. During that time frame, I would encourage the same formula for three or five days per week. You know, weekdays can be one easy way to think about that, doing the two meal replacement and one meal. Now, many can do one meal replacement, so breakfast, and then two meals on the other days, the other two to, to th four days per week. So if you've got a long ways to go, you might do five days of meal replacement and two days of just one meal replacement. But if, you, if you're close to your target, you may just do three days of full-on two-a-day meal replacement, and the other days do more two meals and one meal replacement shake. And that's a good way to get to that target weight, to that target body weight. And the last phase is just maintenance. So once you've reached your target weight, consider one a day for breakfast for meal replacement and two, two really good meals per the Adrenal Reset Diet guidelines, for example. Uh, and if you're maintaining target, that's fine. If you do drift at all, just add in a few days per week as needed of meal replacement to move back down to that target. So <laughs> dive on in. Um, this is such an easy thing. I've had so many work well with this and many that have had diets just not work. And I think the simplicity is a real beauty, a be real beauty of that. So hope you can achieve great health and your preferred body weight very quickly. And if it's useful, I've got a booklet I'll provide for you that's got tons of good shake recipes and options to also make some meal replacement ideas. Take great care of yourself, and we'll talk in real soon.